I wish the wheels spin, but that's actually pretty good because it you know it's coming around but it's taking its time but isn't that better than the prop mover <laughs> hey wait I want my ice cream so anyway I hope you found this helpful take care and have a great day hey how's it going and today we're gonna try to create the illusion of traffic or vehicular movement in our Fortnite map and I'm just in Tilted Towers right now, and I already did a tutorial about how to do this, but I'm gonna kind of go over it again. There are some unique things about trying to lay it down on a street. First thing we do is come up to Windows and make sure Place Actors is open, and then we're just gonna get a camera rig rail, and then just drop it into the scene like that. To make sure it's on the ground, we can just hit End. Now there's some things to keep an eye out for. Make sure our rotation when we drop it is all even. And let's hit the rail spline component and make sure everything is zeroed out here. Of course, we expect this to be a, maybe a unique value. But to make sure it's grounded, let's just raise it up and then just hit end. So we know it's on the ground. Now, it's pointed this direction. And actually, I would like to turn it the other way. So let's go ahead and select it again. And make sure you're on the rail spline component. And here on rotation, let me just click on the rail rig instance. And here on rotation, let's just go ahead and turn the whole thing around 180 degrees. There we go. And then let's go ahead and turn the show rail visualization off. So what we're left with is two spine points. You might want to slow your camera down here a little bit. And all we're interested in doing is just getting the points down. You can essentially say on the X and Y. And then we're gonna come back later and adjust it on the Z. So this is very difficult to do from this perspective. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually going to make sure I'm on the rail spline component and we're gonna go into the top view because it's just so much easier to see what's going down. I'm going to select this first spline point here and I'm just going to drag it out. And I'm gonna actually try to get by with as few spline points as possible here. So I think less is more in a sense. So we're gonna drag this all the way out to about here. Maybe pull it out here. Zoom out a little bit more. I think when I did this before I had, I did it with about eight or nine spline points. Then press down Alt and then we're gonna click and drag it. I'll create another spline point and we're gonna go this way. And you'll see that this is probably a superior way to doing this than, than to use the prop mover. I accidentally created an extra point I didn't want. So I'm just hit delete and delete that point. I'll reselect again here on that point. And I just meant to drag this out a little bit more. So I can just grab these arrows here. And like I said, I might be off on the depth here, but I'm gonna hit alt again and create another point, come this way. Drag this down like this. I accidentally left Alt down, so I'm gonna go ahead and reposition this like that. So I'm just trying to get it centered in the middle of the road as best I can. So at this point, press Alt, and we're gonna go this way. Now I think this is one big long stretch here, kind of toward the end of the road. Yeah, it is. So. I'm gonna keep dragging on just this one point. I accidentally made another point, but that's okay. And I'm gonna come over here. I made another point. I was holding down Alt and I didn't really mean to. But this is, uh, this is fine. I'll just keep dragging this here like this. We're almost done. I'm gonna come here like this. Click this one here. We're gonna adjust all this in a little bit, the fine tune it. And then I just have one more point I'm gonna do. I'm gonna hold Alt and go this way. And then I'm gonna select on the spline component. I should have the option to close the loop. And I don't need this point in here, so I'm just gonna go ahead and delete that. So that's pretty awesome. You can see that we roughly have it mapped out here. We might want to add a point there, but I think if I select this, here's where these handles come into play. If I select this handle, you'll see I can bend the curve here, see? 
but then I might want to push the hand, tighten it up like that. And so you can come in here and uh, with these handles, you can play around with adjusting the, the, the tightness of the curve and things like that. It just takes a little while, but once you get it set up, it's kind of cool because you have this. So I think we're pretty well set up. The only question is how level is this on the ground? So let's go back now into the perspective view here. And it looks like it's riding pretty closely on the ground. So maybe we're in good shape here. So what I'm gonna do now is let me zoom out here. I'm just hitting the scroll wheel. I'm gonna select this ice cream truck and on its rotation, you see how it's subtly off a little bit? So I think we do want it at 90 degrees, but let's go ahead and zero it out and we'll hit 90 degrees there. Now it should be perfectly aligned with our spline. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna right click, go to cinematics level sequence. We're gonna click on this Double click into it with the truck selected. We're gonna go add to track, add to sequencer, add that. We're gonna come here to click that plus sign, go to path, and we're gonna go new binding and we're gonna select our camera rig rail. And see how it jumped to the first zero position? And look, it's filled up the whole sequencer. So let me hit control, because this needs to be a longer sequence, because you imagine this truck's gonna be going around the block. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to drag this red marker out to about 25 seconds, grab this here and pull it all the way to the end. And if I click on this keyframe here, you'll see how it is at one value and this one's at zero. Well, that's the length of our whole animation. So now if I just hit play, you see the truck going around the track and I don't think you'll be able to achieve that result with the prop mover not that many turns and things like that so to be honest with you that actually it just doesn't look half bad and there it is back home again now a couple of things I want to show you if you're noticing that this goes up and down let's go back to our camera rig rail we might have to search for it so let's search for our rig rail. Just type in rig, click rig rail here. We can go ahead and lock the orientation to the rail, but I wanna show you this is kind of cool. So if we click on the rail spline component, you see here, select spline points. Let's hit play and watch this go by. I'm not seeing anything change there. So that looks okay. So anyway, let's go ahead Anyway, and click this, it says no spline points. And now you'll notice here, we can cycle through all of the points. Make sure that this stays at zero, because then that means you're staying level. So if any at any point during the loop, you see this value change, you know that you're going up and down on the Z, which you may not want. So to be completely honest with you, everything looks really good here. One thing I forgot to mention, now that we have the sequencer set, we actually need to go get a cinematic sequence device. So let me search for that and drag this onto the scene here. And then we're gonna go ahead and select our level sequence that we have. And then go ahead and select loop playback. One other thing is I need to get it to play, start on player spawner. So let me get my player spawner here and on player spawner. Okay, and then I'll push those changes and then we'll take a look and see what it looks like. Okay, let's take a look at, at this and see what it, it looks like. Hey, it's on the ground. It, I wish the wheels spin, but that's actually pretty good. It's kind of cool waiting for it because it, you know it's coming around but it's taking its time. But isn't that better than the prop mover? <laughs> hey wait, I want my ice cream. So anyway, I hope you found this helpful. Take care and have a great day.